Quadratic factoring when A equals 1. You've already seen this before because I taught you the shortcut on how to factor when A equals 1. So what we're going to learn today is called the cross product method. Simple steps. Step 1, break down the first and last number. I know you've heard that before because that's what we've been doing this chapter. Break down the first and last number. But you're going to do it vertically. What do I mean by that? I mean if you have x squared, you break it down one on top of the other like this. So instead of breaking it down like that, x times x, you're going to do it vertically like this. You with me? So you're going to see it all happen on the next page, don't worry. So, step one was break down the first and last number vertically. Step two, cross multiply until you get the correct middle number. You with me? So, whatever, however you set it up, you cross multiply. Whatever the answer is, if that is your middle number, you're done working. If you do it and the number's wrong, switch the number. If you do it and you get the sign that's wrong, Switch the sign. Simple? So if you used 4 times 3 for 12 and you got the wrong number, don't use 4 times 3 anymore. Use what? 6 times 2. You with me? So it's just a matter of testing out the numbers. So if the number's wrong, switch the number. If the sign's wrong, switch the sign. You're going to hear that a lot. Now we go to the next page so I can actually show you how to do this. So the first step. I want you to draw a line underneath the whole equation. Line, like this. Now remember, you're going to break down the first and last number. What times what is b to the second power? b times b. Everybody with me? Now break down the last number. What times what is 7? Seven? 7 times 1. Now cross multiply. Let's see what we get. 7 times b, 7b. 1 times b, positive 1b. What's 7 plus 1? Positive 8b. Is that the correct middle number? If you do have the correct middle number, this top part is your first binomial. This bottom part is your next binomial. Now, let's do that same problem using the shortcut so you can see the difference between the two. On the shortcut, break down the first number, b, b. The first sign you see, bring it down. A positive times a positive is a positive. The only factors for 7 are 7 times 1, bigger number first. So I know the shortcut is faster, but this works no matter how large the numbers get. Okay, so that's the last time you're going to see shortcut today. I'm not going to do it again. We're going to do everything like this. All right, so let's do number two now. Line underneath the whole thing. Break down the first and last number. So n times n here. Now, what times what is positive 10? 5 times 2 or negative 5 times negative 2, correct? Now, if the middle number is minus, do you think it's all plus? No, there has to be a minus somewhere, right? So we know it's going to be negative 5 times negative 2 to give you positive 10. Now, cross multiply. See if you get negative 11. Let's check. Two times, negative 2 times n negative 2 n n times negative 5 negative 5 n negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7 is that the correct middle number if the number's wrong switch the numbers so instead of 5 and 2 i gotta use what two numbers what else could give me 10 what times what 10 times 1 how about 10 and 1 can't that give you 11 so so we know, so we, you can already take the shortcut if you see the middle number before you do it. So negative 10, negative 1, guaranteed that's going to work. Correct middle number, 
That means my answer is in front of my face here. The top part goes in one, bottom part goes in the other. Pretty easy? There's a bunch of ways. If you see how the book teaches you to do this, you'll probably burn it. Like, it is crazy confusing. This is the easiest method that I've taught in the last four years, by far, okay? This is the first time you see it, obviously. You're going to learn it more when you practice it. All right, let's try number three here. You're going to try some on your own after. I just have to explain the two things, right? One thing and reminds you of something on the next page. So look at number three, lined under the whole thing. What times what is m squared? m times m. You with me? Now, what is that middle number? That's a letter. What number is touching the m if you don't see anything? A one, right? Now, think about this. There's a bunch of ways to get 90. 45 times 2. Can 45 and 2 give you 1? No, 45 plus 2 is not 1. 45 minus 2 is not 1. So don't use numbers that you know are never going to work, right? What numbers that give you 90 are one away from each other? 10 times 9. 10 and 9, one away from each other. You with me? So that's a little idea on how to get to the right numbers first. So here we go, 10 times 9. But that's wrong because that's negative 90. You with me? So one of them has to be negative. If they were both negative, it'd be a positive. So one has to be negative. Here's a little hint. Which one am I going to put the negative on? I'll tell you. If the middle number is positive, the bigger number is positive. So now you know where the minus goes. Right here. Cross multiply, it gives you positive 1. 10m minus 9m. 1m. Correct middle number. So my first binomial is m plus 10. My next binomial is m minus 9. You with me? Now, let's say you would have used, by mistake, negative 10 and positive 9. You would have done that and got negative 1m. Did you get the correct uh, number? Yeah, but you got the wrong what? Sign. If the sign is wrong, Switch the sign. You with me? So that's how you fix it. If the number's wrong, switch the number. If the sign's wrong, switch the sign. If it's not wrong, you're done. Easy? All right. This is, again, with me. You're going to try some on your own after. So this one with me again. Line underneath the whole thing. Break down the first and last term. n times n is n squared. Now, 12 is either 6 times 2, 4 times 3, or 12 times 1. Which set can give you 4? If you add or subtract those numbers, which ones can give you 4? 6 and 2. So we already know what the numbers are going to be, right? We just have to make sure you put the right sign. So 6 times 2, but that's a negative. So one of them has to be negative. If the, bigger number is po if the middle number is positive, the bigger number was positive. So it goes on the 2. Now when you cross multiply, you get 4n, the correct numbers. So n plus 6 is one binomial because it's on the top, and n minus 2 on the bottom. You with me? Now before I move on, what is the point of this? What is the point of factoring a quadratic function? I'll tell you. If you factor a quadratic function, you can find the solutions. And the solutions are where something hits the ground. You understand? So if my question is, after how many seconds did this marker hit the ground? You can calculate that by factoring. You with me? That's the point of it. The point of it is to see what the x-intercept is. And the x-intercept is the ground in real life. You with me? Now, how do you get that answer? by using the zero product property. You make m plus 10 equal to zero and solve it. Minus 10 minus 10, m equals negative 10. We did this already a bunch of times. But that's the purpose of it. That is the reason why we do this. 
All right, let's move on to the next page. Now, what did I tell you guys yesterday? The first step, oops. What did I tell you yesterday? The first step always is on factoring. Find the GCF and factor it out. Now, the reason why I didn't do it on this page is because every number was a one at the beginning. If the numbers are one, you can't find the greatest common factor because it's a one. But on the next page, these are not ones. These are bigger numbers. So between 3, 21, and 30, the common factor is? I don't know why that came out like that. 3. Now, open your parentheses. Divide to see what's left in your parentheses. 3R squared divided by 3R squared. 21R divided by 3, positive 7R. 30 divided by 3, positive 10. Now we're ready. Line under the whole thing. Break down the first and the last number. What times what is R squared? R times R. What times what is positive 10? 5 times 2. Doesn't 5 and 2 give you 7? So we know we have the answer here. R plus 5, R plus 2. Top part, bottom part. You with me? All right, first one you get to try on your own. Try 14. Go ahead, try it. You guys at home, try it. I'll review it in a couple, in two minutes. Just for, for practice purposes, all right, I'm going to choose the wrong numbers on purpose. So watch. 2, 14, and 24. What's the common factor? 2. Let me get a different color. 2. Now divide to see what's left in here. So p squared plus 2p, oh, plus 7p, plus 12. Now, now that we took out the greatest common factor, we're ready to break this down. Lined under the whole thing, p times p is p squared. What times what is 12? 4 times 3, 6 times 2, and 12 times 1. Which one are you going to choose? 4 times 3, why? Because it equals 7. Very good. 4 and 3, so 4 times 3. Negative, negative. I know it's wrong, but I want to show you. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12, right? But when I cross multiply, I get negative 7p. Is that negative 7p? If the sign is wrong, switch the sign. So sometimes you can move it to the other number. But if they're both negatives and I switch them, what happens? It doesn't change. If you move a negative to the bottom and you move a negative to the top, you still have negatives on both numbers, right? So that tells you a negative times a negative is a positive or a positive times a positive is a positive. Now we know we, we have the right setup. 4 and 3 is 7, positive 7. So we have the correct number and the correct sign. You with me? So now your answer, very important that you don't forget what you brought out to begin with, what you factored out. To begin with so do not forget this two that you took out at the beginning it's still out here clear any questions pretty easy all right these two on your own We're almost done, just do these two on your own. All right, let's review. On the first question, First thing you do is factor out the GCF, the greatest common factor between 2, 16, and 30, which is 2. 
Now what's left in there is r squared minus 8r plus 15. Now this is one that we already seen before. When the last number is positive, it's either positive, positive, or negative, negative. Which one is it going to be on this problem? Negative, negative. Why? Because the middle number is negative. If everything is plus, plus, plus everywhere, can you see a minus? Of course not, because everything's being added. So the only way to get a minus is to subtract. So you have to uh, is to uh, add two negatives together, because the rule is add and keep the sign. Now we can break it down. Line under the whole thing. R times R is R squared. Obviously, this is a 1, 1R, one 1R, one but you don't have to write it. 15 is negative 5 times negative 3. I could have put positive, but I already know if the middle number is negative, then there's no way these two numbers are both positive. Now, when I distribute, when I cross multiply, I get negative 5R minus 3R, which is negative 8R, the correct middle number. So now we're ready to put our answer. My first binomial is r minus 5. It's on the top. Second binomial is r minus 3. Please understand that the order doesn't matter. If you see this answer in a backwards order, like this, it's the same thing. 5 plus 6 is the same as 6. Plus, uh, 5 times 6 is the same as 6 times 5. Order with multiplication doesn't matter. Now, with our shortcut, we always put bigger number first, but this is not the shortcut, so there's no need for it. Now, on the next one, between 3, 9, and 6, the greatest common factor is 3. So we have n squared minus 3n plus 2. Now, again, last number is positive, which means it's a negative times a negative or a positive times a positive. We already know middle number is negative. So break it down. First number is n times n. 2 would be negative 2 times negative 1. If you cross multiply, you get negative 2n minus 1n, which equals negative 3n, correct middle number. So my answer is 3 parentheses n minus 2 n minus 1. So far so good. All right, so these are just the last examples you're going to try. I'm doing these two. You're going to try the next two. And then we'll start with the worksheet. You come back during six period. The work is that worksheet, OK? And then, of course, I listed all the IXLs up here. If anybody wants to make up the IXLs are missing, they can check. These are just the last IXLs from the last two weeks, three weeks, which still haven't been completed. And a lot of these you can do without showing any work. Matching graphs can be done in three minutes. And it seems like the hardest one. But if the first number is positive, it opens up. First number is negative, it opens down. You can already select the answers with that rule alone. Also with the y-intercept. If one has a y-intercept of 3, another one has a y-intercept of 100. You can't pick the graph for that. Very easy to see if it touches 100 or if it touches 2. And that's how that whole IXL is. All right, so let's do number seven over here. Lined under the whole thing. M times M is M squared. Now, what times what is negative 24? It could be 8 times 3, 6 times 4, 12 times 2, 24 times 1. Those are all ways to get 24. But since the middle number is 2, I know the numbers have to be 6 and 4. Because the only way to get 2 is to add or subtract numbers that can possibly give you that middle term. So now, negative 6, negative 4. Which one's going to be a negative? It doesn't matter because if you get the wrong sign, you can just switch the sign. Now you know. But before we get to that point where we have to switch something, let's do it the right way. Right? Where does a negative go? Always, when I ask you that, look at the middle number. The bigger number takes on the middle number sign. So if the middle number is positive, the bigger number is positive. Where does the negative go on the smaller one? Now you cross multiply, and it gives you 6m minus 4m, which is 2m. Correct middle number. So now, 
m plus 6 is my first binomial, and m minus 4 is the next one. All right, last one I'm going to do for you here, and then you're going to try the last two. Between 4, 16, and 48, let me show the right way to find a GCF, a greatest common factor, because some of you might have divided all these numbers by 2. That's cool, but it's not the greatest common factor. It's not going to help you. So you need to do a T-chart. This is the correct way to do it. So when the numbers get big, you don't, you don't get lost. You have 4, 16, and 48 there. The whole point of GCF is the C, common, which means they all have to have it. If they all don't have it, you can't take it out. You can't factor it out, right? Because of that C there, common factor. So what happens? Because it has to be in common, you don't need to break down all these numbers. Break down the smallest number only. Smallest number is 4. And the only factors for 4 are 4 times 1, 2 times 2. Now we can check with the other numbers. Obviously, g is greatest, so start with the biggest number that you wrote here. Can 4 go into 16? Yes. Can 4 go into 48? Yes. That tells you 2 would have been bad. 2 would have been incomplete. So make sure you choose the biggest number that works. So here, 4 goes outside the parentheses. What's left in there is x squared minus 4x minus 12. Now, already we know 12 is 6 times 2, 4 times 3, 12 times 1. The middle number is 4. So we know which numbers we're going to choose. 6 and 2. x, x, 6, 2. Now, one of them has to be a negative so that it can equal negative 12 when they multiply. Look at the middle number. If the middle number is negative, the bigger number is negative. Done. We have our answer. So four parentheses, x minus 6, x plus 2. All right, try the last two on your own, and then we'll start the work. Go ahead, start it. Number eight and the red question. I'm going to erase everything else. Break down the first number. x times x is x squared. Now break down the last number. What times what is 6? 6 times 1 and 3 times 2. Everybody with me? Now what problem do we have on this here? 6 and 1 can give you 5. 3 and 2 can give you 5. Now you have two sets of factors that both can give you the correct middle number. Which one do you choose? Right? So this is the hint here, all right? If the last number is positive, then this is going to be positive, positive, or negative, negative, right? Either way, positive, positive, or negative, negative, either way, what's the rule when the signs are the same? You add. Now you get to choose the correct one. Which ones add to give you five? Two and three. You with me? If the signs were different, you think subtraction, it would have had to be in 6 and 1. You with me? So, 3, 2, cross multiply, you get negative 5x. So this is x minus 3, x minus 2. Now let's do the reverse of that. x squared minus 5x minus 6. First number is x times x. 6 is 3 times 2, or 6 times 1. Both can give you negative 5, right? But now, if this is a negative 6, one of these is positive, 
one of these is negative. When the signs are different, the rule is subtract. Which one subtract to give you 5? 6 and 1. You with me? Now, why did I put the 6 where the negative was? Because the middle number is negative. And when you subtract, the rule is keep the sign of the bigger number. Clear?